Do you like aliens, UFOs, cryptids, and the supernatural? What about self-defecating humor? Uh, actually, it's self-deprecating humor. Well, you may both be right. Alien Theorist Theorizing is a comedy podcast that examines cases like Roswell, Bigfoot, Dyatlov Pass, or the Atacama Alien. Was that that little pickle baby that was found at Chili's? Uh, it was alien remains found in Chile. We also explore the minds of some of the UFO community's best. We talk crop circles with Freddie Silva. And we explore the current state of UFO disclosure. With my man, Richard Dolan. If any of these topics pique your interest, grab a beer and come hang out and theorize with some not-so-sober, like-minded weirdos. As we wade through the BS and get inspired by the possibilities. New episodes every Friday. Subscribe to Alien Theorist Theorizing free anywhere you find podcasts or go to alientheorists.com. I got stuff for you. Holy moly. I need to get some snakes and release them around my house. Uh, but I love eating people. I love eating kids. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural. Lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. corn, corn. Every day that you open your mouth, I know, right? I'm more convinced that you're abducted by aliens. <laughs> no. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the? What? These are idiots. I was laughing reading this because I already knew how you would feel. Idiot. What part <laughs> of the story fits your balloon? Well, this isn't a yeah. UFO. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, well, Mothman. Oh, yeah, Mothman. Well, everyone, I think we know exactly what it is. So say it all with me. It was the Santo Crane. Would you try it? No. You wouldn't eat it? No. Why? Because they're probably toxic. There'd be a lot of poop in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a six-foot alligator go swing into the air and slam into a tree. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cryptids of the Corn podcast. I am the great and powerful Mr. E. And tonight, or today, whenever you listen to this, actually, I got rid of any J clone there could possibly be. And I have replaced him with a good friend. Welcoming to Cryptids of the Corn, John from Crow Town Squatchers. Woo! Yay! Thanks, Justin. I love your intro. That uh, that's cracking me up. All those sound bites. That's hilarious. The the listeners submit them. So every, every year we do a contest, and they they we I don't even know. We produce five episodes a week, so there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, and they'll find their favorite ones. The poop in the pants one. Well, our mutual friend Paul T. Costco uh, has made a meme of that uh, <laughs> about every other month. Yeah, he sent that to me the other night in Messenger. So I felt like I got to see it uh, before he put it out there for everybody. Oh, I think else. you did. So I felt privileged by that. Paul has his core group of people. Paul, if you're listening, here's your shout out. He always complains he says, I don't give him a shout out. A there you go. I'll wear it. <laughs> he wants it. me to make that into a shirt. I'll wear oh, it. Oh, I know you would. He brought me. Have, okay. <laughs> I We're already off topic. But we we vended with John for a couple of years now. He's got amazing stuff. He's going to tell you all about all, everything tonight and all about him and his crew. But Paul is just his own character in the community. If you if you go on Paul's Absolutely. Facebook, uh, oh it's sorry, it's not a conference if he's not there. I know, like it feels empty without him. He. He bugged me. For our, it just doesn't feel right. It's weird. For the Ohio Bigfoot Jamboree, or the one me and Jay are putting on, he bugged me for free tickets for about four months. <laughs> and I'm like, Paul, you're going to come anyways. Like, what do you, what do you care? So I worked out a deal. He has to do something for me to get his free tickets. 
But if you're in Ohio, Kentucky, uh, Pest, Pe- Pennsylvania, West Virginia area, and you don't have Paul T. Costco at your conference, it's not a it's not a conference. It's a festival at best. Oh gosh, but For no, sure. John, please tell us about you. You know where people can find your links and all that stuff, and everybody at home. I'll have all the links in the show notes and stuff like that, and then we'll get into talking about stuff. Okay. Well, uh, you can find us um, on Facebook. We have the Crowtown Squatchers store. Um, I don't have a. Uh, I don't have the greatest uh, technological savvy per se. So what I tell everybody is we have PayPal. Um, if you see something on our store and you really like it and you want it, just hit me up with a DM. Um, we can do the PayPal and I'll ship it out to you the next day. I've, I've sent stuff all over the country, Canada, California, um, everywhere in between. It's been pretty cool. And like I said, I try to get that stuff out to you the next day. We have all kinds of t-shirts, hoodies, toys, um, statues and and figurines and things like that that we uh sell at our store or you can come and see us at uh, you know at all the festivals you know we've obviously the festivals and conferences we get out there quite a bit i think we've done i think beth counted them uh 30 some this year already <laughs> and we still have i think we still have like six or seven left and you're missing so, the best one of the year. We've been pretty busy over Shame the summer. Shame on you. Oh, you know, it's prior commitments. No, I you get know, it. Can't bail we got, out of those. We got so. the we got a late ball on ours. <laughs> I yeah. With with me and Emily were in the hospital for all that time. We kind of got a late start moving that stuff along. But next year, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But no, it's it's going to be a fun time. Yeah. Next year, let's move it. Why don't you move it to July? Let's have a July 4th. This is what I tell everybody. Nobody has a Bigfoot conference on July 4th. Let's have a Bigfoot conference on July 4th somewhere. We could have we could have a conference. We have speakers. We have fireworks. And then we could all go squatching. So that would be the bomb. I can't talk a lot about this, but... There is a project in the works for me and Jay, maybe in July next year, but it's not in Ohio. It's not in Ohio. But we and you could talk about that off air because I kind of had Uh, the same sentiment that okay, July is kind of June and July are kind of lacking here in Ohio. What is it really? Just Monster Fest really is the only thing in the actual summer. Um, they are going to have a, uh, the first week of June, they're going to have a, the Bigfoot and Banjos thing at Salt Fork. Yeah. John puts that on. Uh, Jay went year. this so past year. That. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had yeah. a lot of fun so, with that. John uh, Hickenbottom. He was excited about that. Yeah. But, you, but so you the do... rest, you're right. The rest of June and July is, July is like barren. Now you get it. Everybody's traveling for vacations and that kind of stuff, and it's it's normally so hot. At least here in Ohio, we're both Ohio guys. But at least here in Ohio, July is normally yeah. It can be miserable. It can be really nice. <laughs> yeah. Um. So with Cro, I got a question, and I've I've never asked you this, and I don't know if I ever did this on purpose or not. Where is Crow Town? Crowtown is Coshocton, so is that's it? where we're from. That's where we live. And so the reason it's Crowtown, they picked up it picked up the nickname Crowtown back in the '60s and '70s. They really had a problem with crows coming here, uh, and they would come to the downtown area. And it seems for some reason about every ten years they seem to come back in Moss. Um, and I'm talking about like biblical amounts of crows, like not a few, like they come over, they'll come in and take over. So the last time it happened, um, 
was in the early teens or actually about 2012, 13. They were all over. I mean, they, they knew, you know, crows are really smart. So they knew the trash truck routes. They knew where to be. They knew when everybody had their garbage out. So like I would wake up and uh, Thursday morning's trash day or Friday morning was trash day. And they would be everywhere in every yard. There'd be hundreds of them every, all over the place. So, but they go to the downtown area at close to sundown and what, um, so I don't know who told them this, probably like somebody from OSU or whatever to try to make loud noises, try to drive them down to the river, which is where they're supposed to be. Cause that's where they roost and mate and all that stuff. So they bought, they'd shoot fireworks off and then they eventually bought this little tiny cannon and so every day in the fall, back in, it was like 2012, 13, you'd hear this boom. And it was them scaring the crows off. But like I said, it started in the 60s and 70s and people just started calling it Crow Town. And then in the 90s, I was in a, a group of us, we called ourselves the Crow Town Banners. And we, a bunch of us had vans and we would go to all those van end things that they used to have down at uh, the Ohio Raceway down, down by the line. Lancaster. And then, um, then we have Crowtown Pizza here. We have Crowtown Radio. And uh, of course, we have Crowtown Squatchers, uh, our Coshocton's most prolific uh, Bigfoot uh, <laughs> suppliers. There you go. I never knew that. I really didn't. I, knew, I mean, I knew you were from Coshocton. I just, I never knew about the crows. I mean, I'm in the, we're on different sides of Ohio. So we're in the corn belt. Yeah. So we're all known for corn and corn. And then there's some more corn. And then a soybean field yeah. when you get. And then there's a few corn fields to break up the uh, yeah. monotony. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, the sometimes soybeans. there's tricolor corn in the middle of the golden corn. So, oh, you, yeah. You know, you, yeah, you can tell that you, everybody can tell the difference. But what oh, got you. Sure. <laughs> what got you into. The Sasquatch side of stuff in life. Well, uh, originally, so I, I give, uh, and you you met mom, and you know uh, I can't not mention her, and, and that she passed away in this year because she was such a big part of getting us uh, started and, and cheering us on in this. But um, mom was a Star Trek fan. Uh, she was a science fiction. My mom loved science fiction. So w I, when I was growing up, we watched on TV when I was a little kid on Sundays, especially it was mom's day to watch TV. So we would watch uh, Star Trek at six and then at seven o'clock in search of would come on. So if you've ever watched the old in search of Leonard Nimoy, you know, uh, Bigfoot episodes, Loch Ness Monster. Uh, ghosts, paranormal, UFOs. That was all part of my, I mean, I was five and six years old when we started doing this. So it was kind of ingrained in me. And then I'm a child of the 70s. So uh, the Six Million Dollar Man, um, I got to watch some of those, you know, that Peter Gray um, from 1975 that would be, would they play that sometimes on some of the late um you know, the late shows like Fritz the Night Owl or Big Chuck and Little John. You'd see that sometimes, stuff like that. So anytime there was big, I was fascinated with Bigfoot. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was Andre, you know, maybe that's the, you know, the $6 million man thing and, and all that. Um, and then in 1979, um, I had my own sighting here in Coshocton. And it's funny because it's really not far from where I live now. It's just up here on the um, east side of the city, which basically the city ends right here, right where I live. Um, and then there's a place up here called Old Man McCoy's Hill. And we used to go up there and go fishing all the time. There's three ponds up there. Um, Old Man McCoy did not like us up there. He had two boys that um, were that died up there tragically one drowned in one of the ponds and the other one the was hit by well he was under a tree the tree got hit by lightning during a thunderstorm and it fell on him um 
So he would run us off when he'd catch us up there. He'd shoot you. He'd shoot at you with rock salt too. He loaded his uh, shotgun up with rock salt, and he would. Shoot our couple of our friends found out the hard way that um, <laughs> rock salt don't feel good. No, yeah. Um, but that was another part of the fun uh, that that it was a cat and mouse thing. You know, it was go up there and sneak around and go fishing and try not to get caught. Um, I got to give a shout out to Jessica, our friend Jessica Moira, because she yeah. asked me at uh, when I was telling this story at uh, Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference, and I never thought of this. She said, do you think one of the reasons he didn't want you up there is because he knew what was up there? And I never thought of it that way. I really. So we were walking, me and my friend were walking down this old two track. That's one of it's the way to get up there. Um, it kind of parallels the main road that's on top of the hill. So it's like on the side of the hill. And the woods up to the right of us just, I always say it exploded. Because, I mean, that's what, I mean, it just seemed like all the trees started shaking. They were saplings, you know. And so we look up there. And this is earlier in the morning. So I'm, the sun is, it's, that's the east side of town. Sun's up there coming through those trees. So you got those weird shadows. All I saw was the head and the shoulders. I didn't see a face. I didn't smell anything. I just saw these trees shaking and that shadow up in there. So we, um, we booked it back down the uh, two track and i don't know how we just we kind of we both jumped on each side of the track behind some bushes and we took we had fishing line so we ran fishing line across the two track so if he came down the idea was we were going to trip him and we were going to stab him with our little <laughs> booty knives that we had like I don't know why that we thought that was a good <laughs> idea, but we had this superhero thing going on too. At the time. We were kind of like, uh, we thought we were, you know, vigilantes too. So um, that was weird. Uh, the funny thing, there's a couple of things that happened um, when I tell that story. I've, it's kind of haunted me, which I got tortured about it growing up and, and, and uh throughout my teenage years and stuff we got teased about it everybody you know it was totally you saw bigfoot he knows mm -hmm. it, you know and back then that's the 80s i mean it was taboo to be talking about bigfoot like you were a psycho nut job um so there was a little bit you know there was a lot of stigma that went along with that and uh but i kind of just rolled with it especially um after what happened in the late eighties. So Don Keating had already, you know, he'd been doing all the, the meetings out in uh, New Comerstown and, and started having the conferences. Um, but I, I don't know if he had a conference yet. I can't say that. So I don't know. I don't want to say he did. And somebody will say, Oh, he didn't start the conference till whenever. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I, so I'm not sure. But in 87, uh, a couple of my friends had a road crossing we were still all in high school and they had a road crossing and this thing ran across. They said as a juvenile Sasquatch ran across the road, they backed the car up to look at it. And it was actually, it had this, it's back turned to them and they could see the hair and everything. And uh, so one of the, one of the guys that's in the car is one of the dudes that I go out squatching with. Um, we, we usually go out in the fall. So, um, He'll tell me about it, too, and he's like how freaky it is, and he's had a few encounters after that. So that happened, and then about two weeks after that, three of my, me and three of my other friends were out in the valley close to where they had that encounter, and uh, something chased us out of that valley with just vocalizations. So... Uh, it was kind of along the lines of um, Ohio How. Mm -hmm. I can't remember it exactly, but that's when I heard the Ohio Howls. I was like, ow. But it's funny. So the other thing I bring up about, so the friend with me in the first encounter when we were younger, 
uh, about 10 years ago, I ran into him out at the fairgrounds. This was before we started Grow Town Squatchers. I didn't have a Bigfoot shirt on or anything like that. And it's been a while since I talked to him about it. But um, I said, uh, do you, you remember that day we were up on old man McCoy's hill? And he didn't miss a beat. And he said it was a Bigfoot, John. Now, if we'd only been up on a hill one time, it would have been, that would have been, duh. But we were up there hundreds of times. And for him to just that quick, uh, that that kind of, you know, gave me reassurance because it's been a long time. And full disclosure, you know, during my 20s and 30s, I spent a lot of my time uh, in and on drugs. So a lot of things are cloudy up in the old, you know, Belpre there sometimes. But uh, it's good to get, uh, you know, some some positive feedback on that. Yeah, no, to, that's to know that I'm not insane for one thing, and that was another reason. Speaking of the the drugs and alcohol, when I started going to AA meetings and things like that, when we went to our first uh, Ohio Bigfoot conference, um, people were coming up to me and like, "Have you ever seen one?" And I'm like, "I I have," and I was like, "I mean, I was like real sheepish about it, you know." To talk, I was like, "I I did." And they're like, tell me all about it, you know, tell me about your encounter. And mm -hmm. I was, so it was really cathartic to be able to talk to people about it that actually were not looking at you like, you know, you got a screw loose or, you know, I'm going to ridicule you or make fun of you. 100% therapeutic. You when you're a kid. So that was, that was really cool. I mean, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to, I wanted to be like, I wanted to, you know, talk to the people in this community because I not only do I want to be able to share my story and have people uh, not give you flack about it, but to be able to hear other stories, to be able to, you know, kind of see those similarities. And you've heard enough to know, like you hear all these hundreds of stories from people and you start these th certain things just start falling into 100%. place. Like, yep, heard that story. I mean, yeah, the exact same story from 20 different people mm -hmm. and it's, you know, different people in a different place, but it's the same exact story. When you say that, you mean it in a good way that it's not people that are just parroting back things they've heard. Yeah. It's that they've had such uh, similar encounters that it rings true. So, yeah, it's like the, one of my favorites is the, when people are fishing, that's, that's one of my, I mean, something gets thrown over their head and splash out in the middle of the water. Like, how many times have you heard that story? Like I've we've, heard that story, you know, 20 times from different people. We've and had it's awesome every time. Three different people on the show for that story, for that encounter. Uh, yeah. Uh, from Michigan to North Carolina to Texas. And it's, you know, and the first one we did was with Andrew, a good buddy I'll of ours. Get another one because my, 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 uh, aunt, my niece's husband had it happen to him. Out on County Road Six, which is a very well known Bigfoot hotspot but here in Coshocton County. Like you, you were saying with your buddy, after all those years, and you just eat, it was still on his mind. So it was still just hanging there, ready to come out, which is amazing, you know. I missed the first part of that, Justin. I'm, oh, sorry. There's a little bit of lag right now. Connection. We're having, we're having some lag issues. So. That your buddy, when you brought it up to him years later, that is amazing that, you know, instantly he had that recognition of that it was a Bigfoot. You know, it was on his mind. Like you said, you've been there hundreds of times. You know exactly what, what thing you were talking about. It's just, you know, that. And like you said, these these conferences are therapeutic. I've seen it, you know, you we don't do as many conferences as you do, but we've seen it hundreds of times that if you guys at home have never been to one that a person will come and you could tell that they're uncomfortable and all that. And they'll, we had it happen at, you know, salt fork, the same one John was talking about where the guy came up to us and was like asking about Bigfoot and stuff like that. I'm sorry. Hit the mic. It was asking about all of these things. And after he talked to us, you could see like he lost 30 pounds and then he walked right back outside he went home. 
That's all he wanted was somebody to tell him, you're not crazy. Because he had a pretty, not a mundane encounter, but like we've been talking about tonight, you know, that standard encounter where he was getting false charged, you know, bluff charged and tree shaken. And it freaked him out. And then after I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, like, uh, I think uh, Doug Waller was there that year. I'm like, well, you know, my encounter is in Doug's book. But I know for a fact that several of his books have the exact same encounter, you know, over and over and over again. And once I said that, he just like, you could see like, okay, I'm not crazy. I, I'm good. You know, he wasn't, he, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, actually, I have an update. I don't know if I've ever shared this on the podcast. Jay just met that guy again three years later at uh, Bigfoot and Banjos the first thing, the first time that John just did it this summer. And Jay said he looked 10 times better. Like he looked relaxed. He looked like he was enjoying himself and that kind of, you know. Where the first time he met him, he looked like he hadn't slept in a week or two. You know, you could tell whatever had happened to him and shook, you know, shook him up so much. So like John was saying that that confirmation is so important. You grew up in the 80s, and that was kind of, I'm going to say the end of the 90s and early 2000s was when the community kind of started to make the change. You know, it really wasn't until like the 10s, you know, and finding Bigfoot, you know, mountain monsters, monster quest, you know, all these kind of shows were being pumped hard that Bigfoot was no longer taboo. And now, you know, the more acceptable thing to talk about. Like, we're the crazy Bigfoot people in our town. We're happy with that. I have a nine foot Bigfoot in my backyard, and I have two four foot Bigfoots in my front yard. So, and then kids will come up. I was watering the garden, and literally, uh, we're right by the school, you know, the high school, the high school, elementary school. So kids walk by the house, you know, at like three thirty, four o'clock, and they were talking. They just came up, and there's like four or five of them asking about Bigfoot and stuff like that. Not like screwing with us or nothing. Like just they want to know about Bigfoot. They were super excited just to talk to somebody about Bigfoot. And I'm like, you know, I know. And they're talking about the TV shows, and I'm like. Well, we know Renee, and we know Wild Bill and all that. And they're like, you guys don't know Wild Bill. And I'm like, all right. Well, I showed them the picture of Wild, Wild Bill riding in our bus with us. <laughs> and they were like, oh, they were so excited, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but you just made me think about all this, that how important this community is and how amazing it actually is. <laughs> Are you still there? Yeah, it's a pretty. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's a. There was a big uh, wag in that. So, yeah, it's an amazing. Um, it's an amazing. I agree with you completely. I mean, it was. Uh, we. I don't know if we've talked about this, but I've had this conversation with other people too about how uh, you know, obviously, along with the internet and you know, when uh, finding Bigfoot came on uh early those early uh aughts and things like that about that time periods when things people started shifting their ideas about these things are a little more believable and people understood it more i do think the also the other thing is uh because when you say it that way i think people are like well i think they can apply this to it like oh yeah it's you know it's more out there so it's you know people see it more often and mm -hmm. things like that but the other side of that too is i think it's it goes to something you said too. People are sharing more of these weird things that happen to them. And it, it's, to me, it's always been, I always use this example. Um, every town has a haunted house. Everybody knows the house is haunted. It's been talked about for, we had a place in Shockton. People talked about it for years. Like it's haunted. Like everybody knows it's haunted. If you go in there, something weird's going to happen. You're going to know it's haunted. You know, where's that story come from? Like people keep going in there and having these same experiences. But if you ask them in front of a group of regular people, they'll be like, I don't believe in ghosts. And they're like, well, you just told me that house is haunted. You know, it's haunted. like, what is, how does, where's that, you know, where's that separation at? But I think, you know, it, like I was, the point I was trying to make is more people are sharing things that have happened to them that are strange and what, whether it be Bigfoot, whether it be UFO sightings, whether it be paranormal. And, you know, with me, 
it's been a weird crossover. I talked to Jamie and Jenny about this. Like, why does that seem to happen? Because I've had a Bigfoot encounter and I had my, I lived in a house in the nineties that was haunted beyond haunted. I had poltergeist activity like crazy. Like I had a comic book room, a lot like this Bigfoot room. And it looked like a tornado went off in mm. one day, uh, right after I got done cleaning it and nobody was in my house. Like I went downstairs, came back up and it was. <laughs> so like, um, why is that? Why is this? Why do those weird things? Ha- is it, is it the person? Is it, you know, what's going on there? So, uh, you know, there's a he- heck it's neat because the more people you talk to, uh, the more you see these kind of, uh, crossovers or, or, you know, uh, Pennsylvania, is well known for that too. Obviously, the Chestnut Ridge thing, if you think about that, you know, all that weird yeah. stuff that was happening there at the same time. Why is it all happening? You know, why does it happen to some people and not others? You know, I, I love the another one, you know, going back to the same stories. My other favorite is, uh, and I'll do this is a bad impersonation. Well, I've been hunting all my life. I ain't never seen nothing out in the woods. <laughs> And then you <laughs> talk to the same you talk to the same guy who is a hunter and who's been out in the woods and who has seen a Bigfoot and it has scared him crapless and he doesn't want to go hunting anymore. So uh, you know you have both you have both of the same coin, but that you know. So why does some people see it? Some people don't. Uh, two things. It's just really cool. Like yeah, I think you're 100 percent right that, and I think in our presentation at the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Festival. Uh, we talked about that, that I do not believe the number of actual sightings is going up. I believe that the number of people comfortable to talk about what they see is going up. So that there's always X number of sightings every year but, with these shows, with these conferences, with this the community that's growing. Like we go to these Bigfoot conferences, you know, Half the people go and they enjoy themselves. They may not take Bigfoot seriously, but they're there to have fun. The other half, you know, maybe a little more seriously. And then like that 10% is, you know, the hardcore group. But everybody's there for a Bigfoot. Or when you do the cryptid festivals, everybody's there for the cryptid side of it, you know, and all that stuff. That it's not, I I don't know how many Bigfoot sightings there are a year. I know that there are documented 3,300 in the continental U.S. every year for the last about decade. You know, give or take a couple hundred here and there. But 20 years ago or 30 years ago or, you know, when we get to the 80s, you know, it was a couple hundred. But that was the people that would call because that was before, you know, you could email, before you could submit something. You know, you actually had to pick up the phone and call somebody to turn in your report or write your report down and mail it to somebody. Mm-hmm. So it just, I think, has become more acceptable to talk about what you have seen, not the number of encounters is going up. I forgot my second thing. So there you go. I do that all the time. So <laughs> I, I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, yeah, I agree with you completely. I, I just, and that's the great, that's the great thing about, you know, like you said, that's the great thing about going to the conferences is you can, you can talk to people about um, all the ideas and, you know, it was to say, like, like some, you know, I'll be, I mean, I'll be completely honest. There, obviously you've had, there's some people that have talked to us and they, you're just like, wow, Jay's got a corn hat on his head or Justin. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Jay's got a tinfoil hat on. Jay wears the tinfoil hat. That's to the protect corn. him from some, yeah. some of these ideas. <laughs> now, you want to hear, I I don't know if I shared this, so I won't name the conference, but I will tell you, I believe, oh, I think me and you were there together. It was the first lady in, the first like minute that the thing was open. And she's like that, like maybe 85, 90 year old white hair woman and comes pushing. Oh, what do you call it? Like a laundry cart. You know what I'm talking about? 
like the, the the metal basket with the bag inside. Yeah. So I thought like, oh, she came with that stuff. You know, she came to be able to buy the stuff and actually move. Like if she found something big she wanted or whatever. It just opened, and it was all. It was clear full. She had brought all of this stuff from home. And it was just random stuff. And I'm wearing that stupid corn hat that I love to death. And I, do, I forget that I wear it sometimes, you know, because I wear my bandanas, I wear my hats. So I, I forget what's on my head. And she comes up to me and she's like, well, I'm told you know how to get rid of the fairies in my house. And I'm like, uh, I know a little bit about Faye. You know, we've done a lot of research into the Faye and stuff like that. What do you know? Like, who told you that I know how to? And she's like, well, him. And she's pointing at somebody that's not there. So she's talking to somebody beside her that isn't there. That's telling her that I know everything about the fairies. So she's asking me these questions and she's like, I just want to get rid of the bad fairies. The good fairies are allowed to stay. All this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, I don't really know. And she's like, well, why don't you know? And I'm like, I, 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 I just know what I researched. She's like, but you're one of them. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, you're a fairy. You know, you're wearing, you have the hat and everything. Like, and I'm like, what are you? T-? And I forgot I'm wearing the corn hat. Keep mine. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, oh. So I pointed at friends of mine. I'm like, you know, they, they will know. How to get rid of the fairies. They'll help you. And she beeline right for those guys. And I'm like, I forgot I was wearing the corn hat. I look, I, this, me and this lady had a, about a 10 minute conversation about how to get rid of the fae. And I'm like, they don't really don't like iron. And she's like trying to figure out where can I buy iron? Yeah. You probably did look like. Like if there's a 300 pound fay out like there, one of them. I'll be impressed. Oh gosh, no! But conferences are so much fun. <laughs> I we we love the conferences, and we don't sell really pretty much anything, you know. So I would love to do 30 of them a year, but we you know we don't we can't do that. Are most years in Ohio area? You know, I know you do like Pennsylvania, you do West Virginia, but are most years Ohio based? Um, that's a pretty good mixture. Actually, if I was going to say where our, uh, main, we spend a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Um, they have a lot. I mean, I, I, you know, people will say, well, Ohio's got some conferences and I'm like, yeah, but Pennsylvania has got, Pennsylvania has got a lot of big conferences. Um, uh, well, I shouldn't say big, I shouldn't put it that way. They have a lot of uh, festivals that turn into really big um, events, like so uh, Marionville. Uh, I, you know, way out in the middle of nowhere, up there in the forest, you know, uh, up there in the Allegheny Forest. I think it's the Allegheny Forest, but I mean that's huge. Like there was ten thousand people up there, and I mean it was crazy. Like three days of weather was terrible that friday and it poured down that night but then saturday was really nice huge turnout uh lots of great speakers and then we had the uh then you go down to kecksburg uh the kecksburg ufo festival that was a blast uh, i never thought that that would be such a huge i mean it was that was a lot of fun we had a lot of fun down there and then uh we were all all of us were at squonkapalooza um that's growing pretty good p.s that's a um, that's a really there was fun a few one. Few others sprinkled in there that we go to. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, really really neat ones. There's some smaller ones that we go to over there. Uh, the Fayette County uh, Bigfoot uh, people put on. They put on a couple of different ones, and uh, some and like we're doing the one. Uh, the reason we couldn't come to yours this year. That's one of the ones we do, and it's uh, it's to help the volunteer fire department down this yes. one's down in Jefferson, uh, Pennsylvania. I so, guess uh, I guess that's it's really excusable. neat. They have these little Bigfoot shows. 
Yeah, they have these little Bigfoot shows like that, you know, and it's for these little communities. But people come out in droves, man. It's crazy. It's like, I can't believe it. It's just like, wow, you know, you, you just go over, you know, and it just, uh, it's always a lot of fun and there's a good turnout and people come out and they buy a lot of stuff. I mean, let's be honest, I'm a vendor. When people come out and buy stuff, I think it's a great conference. <laughs> and it kind of shows, so, you know. I I always feel but they that, love it over there. They love, I mean, there's so much interest in Bigfoot. I always feel bad for other vendors that ask us our opinion because we don't sell anything, right? You know, we get, we make our money off the back end going to these things, you know, so we right. base it off how many new listeners we get. So our product is quote unquote free. So it'll be like, I, I can tell you how many people were there. You know, I can't tell you how, if they were, like, you know this, but for everybody at home, there's a big difference between a large crowd and a buying crowd. And, you know, you can have a 1,000 people that spend way more money than 5,000 people will. It just, you know, because they're, they're there to buy stuff. They're there to do stuff, Absolutely. you know. So for us doing the podcast stuff at festivals, we just, you know, we look at the number. That's what matters to us most because we don't sell anything. You know, we have T-shirts and that stuff, but that's not what we're there, you know. 99% of the time, nobody's going to buy a T-shirt from us that they don't already know us kind of deal. You know, our T-shirts have me and now they have me and Jay on them. So it'd be very odd if you were like, you know, I'm going to buy a T-shirt with these two random hillbillies from Northwest <laughs> Ohio. But it happens. I mean, it's awesome when it happens, but, you know, it's it's rarer. You have merchandise and T-shirts and that kind of stuff that is greatly, widely accepted. You know, ours is always niche because that's just what we do. So, I don't know. Pennsylvania, I love Pennsylvania. I love West Virginia, and I love Ohio. Ohio has, like, 19 Bigfoot conferences or something like that. And they're all on your side of the state. In one in Cincinnati. <laughs> so that's why we're excited to bring one home. Yeah, I I always I always uh you know when Jeff when Jeff does the frogman in March, you know, I I try to tell anybody that's over there, like if they're you know, people talk about they see all the Bigfoot stuff and they want to talk to it. like I wish you guys have more Bigfoot stuff on that so, I mean down around that area. Like, don't get me wrong, and uh, you'll hear this from me all the time. I hate driving down to Cincinnati. I hate that drive because you got to go down 71 from Columbus, and it's just it's just traffic and traffic. And the one time me and Beth went down there, we were going down for different reasons. It was for my work. Uh, there was a horrible car accident. and I, I've got PTSD from that because we were stuck on the highway for hours, and we had to take a... Uh, it was really, and it was, a, you know, the thing about it was these cars were on fire in front of us. Like we got off them and there was like four people that died and it was just mm. horrible. And it's just like, I, I never can figure out like who, who's running this. <laughs> can you put a few more lanes down here? <laughs> but that being said, I mean, it's kind of off track, but I would love to have, you know, more Bigfoot stuff over there because you get down in that, you know, Cincinnati area. That's your it's basically three states of yeah. Bigfoot people that can that will go there. I mean, that's a and he's there's a lot of people that'll go to that area if you had a, a Bigfoot conference. And he's still three hours from us. You know, our part of Ohio, the nearest Bigfoot festival is a minimum three hours. And whether you go into Indiana, you're going to Michigan, or you're going to somewhere in Ohio. Yeah. It's it's a it's a three hour drive, uh, so we're super excited about doing one here, and I think I'll just arm wrestle you to bring it. You know, you make sure you're here next next year, but you know we're we're trying it. I wanted to say with here's another story. You're pulling all kinds of stories out of me that I don't think I've shared. Me and my wife and John knows Emily, but for a bit home Emily, uh, that seventy one interchange is the first time I was going to meet her parents. She, cause they're my bo all, both sets of my in-laws are in Cincinnati. 
we were living at Hawking because we were both in college. So we would go up to Columbus and then go down. That was just the fastest way there. So she did. Oh, gosh, she's going to be so mad I'm sharing this. She was trying to do that from 270 to 71. And there's a semi behind, like in the in the interchange lane, laying on the horn, letting her know not to get over. I mean, I swear she's that, you know, an inch from this thing's bumping. I'm just like, just go, you know, keep going. We'll go to the next exit and turn around. And she's and she's panicking, panicking, panicking. And then she cuts this semi off. We are in essentially a Honda Civic. And she cuts this semi off. And I swear, you know, you couldn't fit a quarter in between us and the semi. And then she starts slamming on the brakes because she freaks out. The rest of the two-hour drive, I didn't talk to her. I was, I in my head, I was convinced I'm breaking up with this lady. Like, once we get, I just got to get through this weekend because we're going down to meet her parents. I'm never going to see these people again. And now their grandchildren are sleeping in the other room. But, yeah, that interchange, Columbus is a nightmare. Going to Cincinnati is a nightmare. I just, you made me. You brought back a memory I probably blocked so me and Emily don't fight. <laughs> yeah, it's always like it's it's terrible. And my uh GPS now always wants me to go into on 670 and then go to 315 to get on 71. Which thank you, by the way, GPS, Siri, whatever, because I'd much rather do that than get on that 270 uh 71 exchange because it's always it's there's always a traffic jam there always so like it it makes absolutely no sense to go that way like well, it's better now than it used to be because yeah. they did some it's stuff. It's, it's got an extra but it, lane back now. in the day when it was just that one little it was that one little clover leaf thing it was, was just like who thought this was a good idea four lanes of traffic to one off to another interstate yeah land that's good that's good it's not the worst interchange in Columbus, believe me. It's not the best either. No. Uh, so I have to tell you, Jay's not here. And I believe he wants to bring you back on later to do a wrestling talk episode of all this stuff because he was very disappointed that he wasn't going to get talk wrestling with you. Because I'm not a wrestling guy. I, you know, I, I just, it's not my thing. I think it's neat. I just not, you know, I don't know nothing about it. But I think you will have his favorite piece of merchandise he's ever bought at one of these conferences, at least top three. And we go to a lot of them and we buy stuff at every one of them. And it's in the studio. And I shared this with you off air. The Andre the Giant WWE Bigfoot. In in the plastic. which I try, I've been I've always tried, and I'll I'll tell you a neat little story about that. Yes. Um. So, and I've told I think I told I, I think I told you guys this story before, but when that came out, I was so excited. Um. It was start. It came out in uh, late 2019. I just happened to be scrolling uh, one day on the interweb there, and I thought, you know what, maybe. And I was, it was just a whim. And I'm like, I'm going to put in Andre and see what comes up. Those figures, obviously, were going to be sold at Walmart. And um, I was like, you're kidding me. And they were like 19 bucks, 19.99 or something. I was, and this is, I was like, I'm going to buy three cases of them. And I'm going to sell them for 30 bucks because I want everybody to have one of these things. Because this is like a piece of, this is a huge piece of, uh, you know, Bigfoot lore here. This is like, this is one of the things that, can, you know, if you've never, for anybody, and I'm sure they have, but if you have never seen the $6 million man Bigfoot episodes with Andre the Giant, stop what you're doing right now. Go to YouTube, click that in there, $6 million man Bigfoot. Andre, and you'll get you watch those episodes. It is unreal. It is so awesome. So 
the plan was I'm going to buy all these and I'm going to sell them. Everybody will get one. It'll be cool. So this was two, 2019 in the winter time. So guess what happens uh, if you if you've been living under a rock in early twenty or early twenty twenty, we had this little bug come along and Just basically screw up everything on the planet Earth, and those Bigfoots disappeared from Walmart. Fast forward about three months, and they're all over eBay for 50 bucks a piece. So somehow they jumped and Walmart, I did, I know one person that found one in a Walmart and it was down around Cincinnati. Uh, they found one in the wild, but all the rest of them almost, I mean, overnight were on eBay for $50 a piece. And I'm just like, so there's some, I don't know what kind of dirty pool was being done and who was pulling all these strings, but that's what happens. So all of you all that love Andre, you would you got cheated out, and that's another reason to hate the man. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. it you know, we talk about literally eating politicians on this show, so <laughs> good. You know, eat the man. Uh, no, but Jay loves it, and I told you off air that I always... Wait, you should have me on at tax time. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, but he shows it to everybody. He leaves it in studio, and I, like I told you off air, is I always, I always take pictures of like plastic laying on the floor, and I'll be like, oh, I opened it, or Atlas opened it. Sorry about that. I'll get you another one. Like there's ten thousand of them laying around <laughs> somewhere. No, uh, but we're we're hitting about the fifty minute mark. Why don't you go ahead, if you will, for me, John, is once again, tell everybody where they can find your links and all that stuff. It's a pleasure been having you on. I've really enjoyed it, and we're going to have you back on because Jay wants you on for a WrestleMania, I think, episode. Absolutely. Um, so uh, you can find us, like I said, on Facebook at the Crowtown Squatcher Store. And like I said, you see something on there you like, just hit me up with a direct or a messenger. And uh, we do PayPal and I'll ship it out to you usually the next day. If you see some t-shirt that you like and you're like, hey, John, I'd like that in a different color. If you give me a few days, I can get the shirts in. I don't carry, uh, usually I have all black. So, I mean, I can even change up colors, but it gives me, I need a few days to order the shirts, but. I've done that one before too. So just Crowtown Squatcher store. Uh, hit me up on DM. Come see us at uh, this weekend. We're going to be at the Flatwoods uh, convention down in Flatwoods, West Virginia. And then, of course, next weekend, the granddaddy of them all, the biggest cryptid festival that there is on the planet Earth, the Mothman Festival down in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, my ancestral home. So uh, come down there. If you've never been to the Mothman Festival, do yourself a favor. Clear your schedule for the weekend of the 21st. It's well worth it. Head down to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, because it's going to be awesome. It's well worth it. Mothman's Absolutely. Worth it the is trip. the best. But, all right, John, how we like to end it here is I'm going to count down. I know the lag's kind of bad. I'm going to count down from three. And we're both going to scream bye, and then the outro will play. Are you ready? Uh, maybe. I didn't catch all that. So <laughs> I'm the, I know the lag is bad. Because it was lagging. So I'm going to count down from three. At the end of that, we're going to scream bye, and then the outro will play. Are you ready? Okay. okay. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Bye. Hey, guys. Thank you for listening to Crib is the Corn Podcast. Remember, the best way to support the show is share it with a friend. But if you are craving more of the J clones and more from Mr. E, there's always extra content on Patreon and our paid member space on cryptidsofthecorn.com. We'll catch you next time with more exciting, 
fun and informative information. Bye. Bye.